So uh, last month, Matt Swanson over there, who's probably still working on it right now, did a presentation about code smells and refactoring. So that's why this one's called Code Smells and Refactoring 2. So for those who didn't understand why I was calling it number two, but I was just really wanting to fit in some movie titles earlier. Uh, so I'm going, I quite frankly am modeling my presentation loosely off of his, so there's some cohesion there. So first of all, I want to just sort of recap what a code smell is and why it's called a code smell. So the idea is, let's say, let's say this is this is a model in your Rails app, or this is some Ruby object stuffed full of stuff. This bridge is stuffed full of things. Something smells, and you just have to identify what it is. So that's that's the code smell. Like something in here kind of stinks. That doesn't mean that it's bad. It could just be cooked broccoli, because cooked broccoli smells bad, guys. <laughs> cooked broccoli smells terrible pretty much all the time. Uh, and sometimes you're like, why does my fridge smell terrible? And you just walk past it and the door's closed. Maybe I have an inefficient fridge. But it's just cooked broccoli, and it's OK. Code smell doesn't mean that, that something's broken. It could be just fine. You can live with it and keep going on. But it also could be rotten meat. And we kind of want to do something about the rotten meat. So that's that's the type of, of code smell we're going to talk about today. That's probably a McDonald's hamburger patty, and it probably took like three months for it to finally grow something. Because <laughs> it's not real meat. Uh, I don't remember why this slide's here. Hold on. <laughs> Oh, so so the, the refactoring patterns that we're going to talk about are, are basically patterns that we can apply to these code smells to, to remedy them. This is a freaking pattern, and that's why it's on this stupid slide. <laughs> All right, so the first smell that we're going to talk about is long method. So that's probably pretty self-explanatory. It's a long-ass method, right? Sandy Metz, one of her rules, she has a list of like five rules for Rails developers, I believe. It's fairly Rails-specific. One of them is methods can be no longer than five lines of code. Uh, I always like to point at David Baldwin because I feel like even before Sandy Metz, he was like, I'm sorry, but really methods longer than one line of code are kind of a code smell to me. Three <laughs> lines, I suppose I can live with. Uh, so that's so maybe I should change and have David Baldwin's rules. Methods can be no longer than one line, which is fun. <laughs> Uh, so then, a lot of this, this uh, the inspiration for these uh, code smells and refactoring presentations is from sourcemaking.com, who says, whenever we feel the need to comment something, we write a method instead. And I feel like that's that runs fairly deep in the Ruby community. Um, and some people would say that Rubyists don't like to write comments. I feel like maybe Andrew has said that before. So I used to be a .NET developer, and uh, I've learned the error of my ways. <laughs> well, we take all kinds. Uh, any other uh, former .NET developers like recuperating? No. Okay, just checking. Um, anyway, so so this uh, maybe Rubyists don't like to write comments. I kind of don't like to write comments. So, and it is true that when I feel that I need to write a comment, I'm like, well, there's something that's a code smell in itself, but. Anyway, so we're going to talk about some techniques for fixing a long method. Uh, they're fairly obvious. Extract method, which means just what that says. You find somewhere in, in that long method some code that you can pull out into another method, such that you have a shorter initial method, right? Uh, very similar to that is, in fact, quite frankly, I think it's the same thing. It's just a different name, uh, a little bit more specific name. Replace a temporary variable with a query. Um, so, the, so, well, I'm not sure how to better explain that. We'll get to it here in a second. Uh, and then sort of the like hammer that smashes this particular code smell, the giant like sledgehammer that's probably overkill if you're just trying to get out some drywall, is replace method with a method object. So I want to warn you, I'm about to show you some contrived code examples. Uh, and then we're going to totally live code this thing. And you have to help to say no. However, there's a t-shirt in it for you. <laughs> All right. Code climate t-shirt? A code climate t-shirt. This, well, I don't know why I'm going to hold this one up. I'm wearing it. <laughs> not, I'm not going to take this one off and give it to you. I have an extra. Just, 
I mean, maybe later if you hate me. I do accept cash. All right. Nope. Nope. How's that? Good. Bigger. Bigger? <laughs> Says the guy with the video better. camera. How's that? <laughs> All right, so this is our order class. As I said, it's a contrived example. There would probably be some other stuff on here, and it would probably do things slightly different. But every order has some items, and it's got some coupons. And then we need to return a total. Uh, so we have this long method, somewhat contrived long method. Uh, so we'll walk through a little bit what this does. Uh, and I know sometimes walking through code, listening to someone else walk through code uh, can be really frustrating, especially if you've already walked through it and you already know what's going on. Keep in mind there are other people in the room who are like, the hell is reduce and what is that doing? All right, so what we've got here is we're trying to, to total our items here. Let's just, basically, this is a sum. In fact, I think if we were loading uh, certain versions of, or certain things in Rails, we could actually write this as sum. But what this is doing is sum, and it's passing zero as the initial value so that it's not trying to add something to uh, nil. And then what we're doing here is if the quantity of the item is greater than one, we're giving a bulk discount because we have a very loose interpretation of the word bulk. <laughs> uh, the reason you see 100, and I should have, I should maybe have prefaced this whole thing with everything's done in integers, uh, even though this is money, because if you don't know, you should do it in integers instead of doing it in floats because then you get weird floating point arithmetic issues and you're off by a few pennies and some office space shit happens <laughs> and it's on accident and you still get fired or put in a certain kind of prison that we won't talk about. Uh, a federal one though. Water instead of beer for now, Miles. <laughs> All right. All right, so otherwise we're just we multiply the price by the quantity. We add that to the sum that we're keeping track of. Yeah, point at your computer, that'll do it. Right here. So now we've got this items total. And then we need to get all total all of our coupons, which are like, you know, dollar off, two dollar off type coupons. So we do more or less the same thing, sum, to get our total discount. It's just the discount plus the coupon amount. Then we have, so now we've got our sub subtotal, which is items minus the discount. Then we've got sales tax. That sales tax is a, uh, um, a constant that we defined up here, because I think that's what it is in Marion County, unless it's up to like 10% now, because we have to pay for the Colts and the Pacers and stuff, which is fine. <laughs> <coughs> And then this last thing, dividing by 100.0, gets us a nice, uh, a nice float along the lines of, oops, you know, something like that, right? Okay. So I cheated. I didn't really cheat. I went the easy way, and I included the test. Can everybody read still just fine? Good. Uh, I included the test in the file uh, because I'm lazy. And the test, literally, I did this, and I added some stuff together, like this, and I did everything that it does in that method up there until I got the, the answer, and then I just said assert order dot total equals this, <laughs> uh, which seems like cheating also, but all we care is that that doesn't change as long as we don't change our test, right? And I can prove that. Yep, oh, yep, passes. All right, cool. Good times. All right. So, extract method. I know there are plenty of vets in here dying to tell me how to code. So who wants to tell me what method they want to extract first? 
Yeah. Discount. All right. So, I assume that you think I should just copy this, right? This whole thing. Yes. Put it right in there. What? Did you say I've had a lot of beers? Fair enough. That. So you're at the Balmer's Peak. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the the very basics of extract method. We've got this block here. It obviously lends itself to a method well. So instead of having a, this also is more or less the uh, replace temp with query method uh, method of refactoring uh, because we had this temp variable called discount. And now we've removed it and turned it into a method down here called discount. So this should run unless I miss something. Yep. Everything works just fine. Awesome. Next. Adam's totally. All right. This whole thing. One thing I really like about blocks in Ruby is how obvious it is when you can just ex ex extract a method. So this whole, for those of you who are like, I, I still don't understand what is happening here, um, which I had a hard time with blocks when I first came to Ruby and figuring out exactly what they did and when their return values were useful and when they were not and why and all of that stuff. So this this do end block here, the, from here to line 34 down here, is going to basically return the result of this whole block. And in Ruby, because we don't have to actually write return, even though Andrew Robinson maybe wishes I would. <coughs> in fact, we can just leave this here. <laughs> Your code is so ugly now, man. I agree. Although, Throw some in there too, I, I have to say... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> One line. You know, I actually, no joke, when I first wrote out this completely contrived example, I had a few one-liners and it made it less, it made it five lines long, the method, so I had to add some stuff. Because I knew, and then at first what I did was I expanded them into multiple lines, even though it was completely unnecessary, and then I was like, Daniel Dozuma will kill me for that. He'll be like, if you just move those to one-liners, it's going to be five lines, and then we meet Sandy's rules, and we're done. No, I mean, that's not really how Daniel codes, I don't think. Just being a jerk. I will say that a little bit of the syntax highlighting uh, symmetry of my yellows here with the return and the if and the else makes me feel nice. Green uh, <laughs> makes me feel nice, but but return statements do not. So Ruby automatically returns the result of the last line essentially. Um, in a method, for those of you who don't know. The last line is this end, which means it's going to return essentially its end's first line, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. So this method is going to return the result of this whole block. And that's what's happening here. So that's why this is, oops, I already did test that. So that's why, that's why you have these two blocks that look like multiple lines and nothing's being returned, and yet all we did was pull those out and everything still worked. So now we have a three-line method, but I think we can get pretty close to Baldwin's uh, dream of one line in, in this method. Right? Because we can, we should be able to pull out subtotal. Let's just, let's, oh my god. Let's pull out subtotal. I'm going to put it up here, though, because it seems important. You can see exactly how so variable scope is just magic? Mm -hmm. What now? I don't need to worry about variable scope. I just, everything in an object can see any variable in any other method. No. The word inherits the parent from which it's invoked. No. Um, <laughs> but I think I'm not following. You know where. Show the initial box. Yep. Okay. So we have this adder accessor, which basically sets up your, your getters and setters uh, as 
Um, so you can imagine um, that this exists and it just returns the instance variable items and that this exists. That's more or less what this is doing for any any of the symbols passed to it. And so then I'm setting them here, and then they're except they are accessible anywhere in the object, as they're essentially instance variables. Uh, and then because I, I I move these out to methods, um, this line can use the items total and discount methods and get those values. Um, and I should just to be a little bit clearer here. Just so the, that variable is not named the same as its its method, the method that it's in. So that's what's happening here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Still pass the test. That's a good question. Yes. <laughs> Unless I'm testing something wrong. <laughs> I need to start true. I need to I need to make something break. Let's do this. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Let's do it. All right. So now, now we're in in David Baldwin's dreamland. Basically, that's what's happening here. <laughs> Except for this comment. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll I'll work up a joke for that later. <laughs> Some sort of. Never mind. No. Nope. Nope. Who's familiar with Kirby's Dreamland? Okay. In Kirby's Dreamland, it's this little balloon-looking thing that like can suck in bad guys, and then I don't remember what he does with them, but he sucks them in. And I almost said something about sucking something in, and that's just not appropriate because, well, because I have a problem is why it's not appropriate. It's probably perfectly appropriate, except that I just made it inappropriate. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so we, we covered, I don't know how well you can see these comments. We covered these two, uh, Andrew can't see them at all. They say extract method and replace temp with query method, and then in the parentheses it says see above. So my glasses? I'm just messing. Uh, we did not cover replace method with method object, so we're going to... We're going to try that, and it's going to be a disaster. We're going to try it, all right? So a method object, in this case, what we're trying to do is calculate a total. We would actually extract a class called total calculator. Yep, that, let's, let's just do that. Nobody's, nobody's haggled with me about naming at all, by the way. I don't know. The contrived examples kind of result in that. I don't. Well, I don't know if you were here last time. We spent like a good ten minutes <laughs> arguing with Matt about what he should name things. To he would go, "What should What should I change next?" And someone would go, "The name of that method." Can change or reduce to objects? I could. You should do that. If you want to be incorrect. No. <laughs> So inject is sort of the thing that Rubyists prefer, and the rest of the world uses reduce. Right. Similarly, most Rubyists, I think, write collect, and the rest of the world writes map. They're the same thing, but I have converted to map and reduce because everybody talks about map and reduce, and it's just easier if we're all on the same terminology. For me, personally, you can do what you want. <laughs> the rest of the world thinks you're wrong, but you can do what you want. Anyway, let's, uh, somebody help me here. I totally, what are we doing? <laughs> so, so a lot of this is like, almost all of this. Is this really about an order? This is sort of... We could we could simplify a lot of this uh, by moving it into a what? Who wants a con for a hundred? You can't have magic numbers in the middle of your code. Oh. Um, what do you want to call it? How is that a magic number? Because we don't know what it means without looking at it. Pretty easy. 
money multiplier. <laughs> there. Is that better? Now, this should float after the. Oh. It doesn't collide with the version of 100. FLT, right? There you go. I think the correct, I think the correct <laughs> Hungarian notation would dictate that you start with float so you know it's tight. Right. <laughs> Use it. You should wrap it in float. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, fantastic. That's totally clear now. <laughs> so the thing you might do, in a, in a, preferably in a scenario that's much less contrived than this, <coughs> is I don't really like what I'm doing right now. I really don't like what I'm doing. But I'm going to do it for the purposes of the uh, uh, method object idea. <clears throat> you want? Know this is what we're going to do. Just uh, be soothed by the Kabbalah upstairs. One. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? It is. Yeah, there's another thing up there next month. You're still but. using a 100 awkwardly. What's awkward? What now? What's awkward? You still have a random 100 in the middle of your code. <laughs> Just cast the one up above to end. Yes, freeze it. Freeze it. Oh, man. How did we just learn to? Um, I don't. I should have. I should have thought about this. I wish I had thought of this. They haven't pointed out the one on thirty four yet. So uh, oh, you're saying. Good. <laughs> you were thinking. Oops. I feel so much better about all this code uh. now. <laughs> This is this is how guys. This is how to write asshole code. This is, I don't feel good about this anymore. That would be a much better session. No, this is this is good except that I have named all of my constants like an asshole. So just don't name your constants this way. I broke everything. Do <laughs> 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 you want to escape the total calculator and the initialize of the board? Yeah, I think you do. You need your adder access for some orders, though. This is what, uh, this is what Andrew is suggesting. Extend you should actually accept yeah. the third parameter so you can dependency inject the total calculator and, and then use an or <laughs> to, to, to default to the existing one that you wrote. It's actually one. <laughs> can I do this? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah? You totally can. It seems really <laughs> You can even, I think you can reference the variables prior to it, too. Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> Thank you. Now you have to refactor it. <laughs> this is what you should have done first. <laughs> Next session, let's let's make this better. Let's I just want you to see. I just want you to <laughs> In a less contrived example, <laughs> extracting an object to do some of this might might be good. If there were 
if there were a lot more going on, which actually we're going to see a lot more going on in the next thing. Uh, but I think we probably all agree that there's like approximately 100 changes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I totally agree with you that the magic numbers thing, uh, for the record, but I'm not going to write all those out again. But this, oh wait. Okay, total cut, when total calculator disappears. All right, so this is pretty decent, right? We could. Right. I can see the path is way better. Much better visibility. All right. Uh, we could probably refactor this. We're not going to in a second, I don't think. Um, there's there are some other aspects about this that aren't great, but. In particular, like the items should probably have some responsibility for some of these things that's happening in, in order. But anyway, so that's that. Those are some contrived examples. Of, yep. There is a treasure whereby you have to think between whether it makes sense for you to go through all these steps or to take a single. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think. We should be able to read the treasure whereby our that the division will turn down the road if you continue trying to over uh over factor it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um and I actually think this that that particular issue, um I'm sorry here. Is this better? <laughs> I actually think that particular issue is coming up a lot more often in the Ruby community lately, where we've gone, maybe we have the tendency to go too far the other direction. Um, I'm as guilty, if not way more guilty than everyone in this room probably. Because, uh, well, maybe. Because <laughs> uh, I'm always trying to, to do some more refactoring and yank out some more objects and stuff like that. Um, I swear, like six months ago, it would have been totally accurate to say that Rubyists are scared to create more objects. And now it's like everybody creates so many damn objects that the, tr the, the object tree, the, the, if you imagine in your mind all the objects and how they're connected, like a tree, like tree branches, it's just this giant tree of life oak thing that like nobody can follow. And event it's like one of those trees where eventually the branches come down and stick into the ground and grow roots of their own. It's really weird. Uh, but that's that's absolutely true. You can overfactor. So let's I'm gonna go back for a second. Do we have any questions? Does anybody does everybody kind of get what we did there with extract method and replace temp with query and then the ultra contrived thing we did at the end with replace method with method object? Just one question. Yeah. Um, would you advocate pulling something out into a separate method if you know that it's never going to be invoked by any other piece of code? So if you have a method, it's got you know five lines. Why pull that one out? If it's never going to be used anywhere else. If it makes the code clearer. So it's not only this is this is um, this is a lot has a lot to do with this quote from earlier. Whenever we feel the need to comment something, we write a method instead. So. Um, I'm trying to think of good examples in that code. Let me look at this code real quick and see if we can find something. Um, so for instance, like this is only two lines. It's fairly clear what it's doing, but you could potentially pull out a... Um, yes, that's a good one. That's much better than what I was going to write. An apply sales tax method. Oops. And now, like that's very readable, and this should this could be or something like that. And then when you look at that, you're like, all right, it's items less the discount, and it's applying the sales tax. I know exactly what that's doing, and there's certainly no need to say, you know. Anything. So by applying meaningfully descriptive names to each method, you self document. 
Yes, you should come up here and just summarize things I say, because that was way better than anything I just did. So. <laughs> that was very good. Thank you. Say that again. Uh, you're summarizing... <laughs> Self-documenting yeah, self based on... And there was a meaningful in there, so remember that quote. <laughs> it was really good. Um, <laughs> I'm such a jerk. Um, it was... So by... Damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'll yes. tweet it out later. That was awesome. By, by giving something more meaningful method name, you're self-documenting your code. That was awesome. Beautiful. <clears throat> anyway, thank you. Any more questions? I don't want to. Feel free to ask questions. That's there are no no dumb questions. And chances are, if you have a question, someone else in the room has the same question. Lots of new people and lots of vets that like to help. Lots of vets that volunteered for Anna's Rails Bridge thing. Uh, um, the other day, it seems like the other day. It's been like a week and a half now, but uh, so always happy to help. If you have questions at any point, you can interrupt me also as I'm ranting about the constant names people are making me put in this thing. <laughs> Just so you know, by the way, uh, the next thing is essentially an even worse version of the thing we just refactored. So there's going to be more of what we just did, and I'm regretting that now. <laughs> Long parameter list. So this is very common in Ruby, which is why another reason, this is probably the main reason I picked this one over some of Matt's uh, suggestions to me as to what I should talk about today. Um, yes. Sorry, he's writing me notes. notes. <laughs> We're going to go out later. Um, <laughs> Rubyists have the tendency, well, really all programs have the tendency to to write methods that need lots of different input from places. And so you'll have five different arguments, five different parameters coming into that, to that method. Rubyists actually have the tendency to go, oh, man, look at all of these things. I know. I'll turn it into one by accepting an options hash. And somehow that makes the world better. <laughs> Instead of making me want to die, I, I do it. I, I mean, I do it, but still, even I die a little bit on the inside when I do it. Um, yep. Martin Fowler has a heart murmur every time you do that. Ruby 2.1, uh -huh. name parameters. Yeah, keyword parameters. Yeah, yeah that I'm not covering. Uh, <laughs> instead. <laughs> so the Rails internals from, what, 2009-ish, I think almost every method, and still most of them do today, almost every method you could pass it an options hash at the end and just like override all of the things. Uh, and that became, <clears throat> lots of people, myself included, like I'll read the Rails, the code that is Ruby on Rails, the code for this framework, the code that I'm using like behind the scenes every day, I'll read it and I'll be a better Rubyist uh, because I'll learn all of the different stuff that it does. It's got to be a good code base. I mean, I use it reliably every single day for work. Um, and to some extent, that's true. You can learn a lot. And then to some extent, you can learn some bad habits. Um, but that's all right. I mean, everybody has bad habits at some point that have to be replaced. So and speaking of replaced. One thing we'll do is replace parameter with a method, uh, which is not unlike what we just did with extract method and replace temp with uh, a query method. We will preserve a whole object. So one thing it can be tempting to do when you say, I uh, should have thought of a better, should have thought of examples ahead of time. Um, when you know you're passing something to a method that needs say an item's quantity, it needs an item's price, it needs like the item specific uh, discount code, and you say, and you have an item object that has all that stuff on it, and you're like, all right, pass the item.price, item.quantity, item.discount code. Now you've got three parameters flying into a method when you should just send the item at that point. That's what preserve whole object is all about. Introduce parameter object, which is not unlike the thing we did a second ago, where we made it look like job. Uh, in which we, that, that's not a knock on this pattern, because like I said before, that was a contrived example, and there are going to be good instances uh, in which you should do this, and we may not get that far today. Again, contrived examples ahead. 
uh, including lots of code that you've probably seen before, like you know, 10 minutes ago. I know I didn't write it. We'll run this again. Everything passes with some warnings that we, that's fine. <laughs> Did fail. Yeah, that's right. That's what's important. Look, I do have, look, I just want to point out, there's another constant in here. <laughs> so it's, it's a tiny bit better. This is another order. Come on. Can you record that? Can I record it right now? Yeah. Why not? Uh, I don't know. Why not? I'm just scared to see what will happen. It will probably crash. Don't look at that. <laughs> That's nothing. Might not want to record that. All right, never mind. Okay, sorry. All right, so now our order has gotten bigger. What has happened is probably uh, the, the product people came back and said, look, we also need to, um, we need to have a discount if they order by a certain date, and we need to discount if they're from Alaska because it's cold up there, guys, and I feel bad for them. So that's what we're going to do. At least I think AK is Alaska. In the in the off chance that it's Arkansas, then we still feel bad for them. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this code that we you know what? No, I'm not gonna do it. Um, we've added a couple things here, but more importantly, what we're worried about here is how long this is. So now we're passing in a ton of different things that have to do kind of with an order, um, and it seems like maybe they're they're not they shouldn't all be passed directly to the order. So this actually is it's a, in my opinion a good opportunity to extract. Well, we'll just write it right up here. What is very common in this sort of case in a cart. Agreed? Disagreed? Yeah. Is my tr contrived example way too contrived? It is. That's fine. You can be honest. Um, customer locale is okay. I'm not a big fan of that name, but I can't get away from it. So what I'm about to do is like essentially copy this which seems really dumb now that I'm doing it. Because we have now a similar problem in a different area. This is why we extract too many objects. I've really lost track of my life. That's what's happening. What do we do? Yes. It is more appropriate for these to come off of a uh, cart, but it does not actually get rid of the parameter list <laughs> issue. It moves it. In a less contrived example, this would be awesome. Imagine a less contrived example. It's like a high pattern. Yeah, it's like a high pattern. That's great. Actually. down here in the test where this is actually an issue.
Aww. <laughs> Only two failed. Oh. Yep. I know why. Understand what I did there, or why I did it, which is probably the actual issue. So, if you look at if you look at the card object now, it has the same issue potentially, this long parameter list. But there's gen, there there is a good reason uh, that I did it in the first place. And in the less contrived example, again, this would be um, more clear. But that long parameter list can be confusing and can hide some complexity. So now. We just we just get everything from a particular object. We just extract it from an object that is more appropriate for all of those things that were being being passed in. Um, and if you think about when you interact with Amazon or something like that, you're typically looking at your cart when you apply coupons, um, and it's it's your cart that you're interacting with. The order is sort of an implementation detail on the back end. So that's kind of what we're getting at. In any time you're refactoring, really, you're kind of you need to keep your ultimate domain model in, in mind, like what is your business domain, what are you doing, and how can you make, especially as object-oriented programmers, how can you make your object model somewhat model reality, because that's going to be clear to the next person, it's going to be clear to anybody reading your code, it's going to be clear to you three months from now, which is the most likely uh, other person reading your code, because um, almost always I feel like Miles from six months ago or three months ago was a jerk. <clears throat> Clearly Miles from like earlier this afternoon was a jerk, um, judging from this code. Uh, isn't order date speaking to you that it should maybe not be on cart? That's very on true. That is very true. I like that. Let's do that. That's awesome. You're actually faster at the bin than I am. Ha <laughs> Let's do that. Well. Everybody feel good about that? Any yeah. other suggestions? Yeah. Is there any reason you're keeping items, coupons, and customer locale as attributes of order rather than just getting it off the cart? It seems redundant that you have one to one and you're saving the items from it. Yeah. yeah, it was mostly out of laziness. Um, um, if if I hadn't written such shite code down here in total, if this were already fact refactored, if this were already factored out the way we did the previous one, I probably would have been fine. Um, I would have personally been comfortable in front of you all right now doing even more silence on air. Uh, live coding stuff. Um, you should just delegate all of those methods yeah. to your cart. <laughs> That's interesting. You might need more. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you have to require. <laughs> And then it's death delegate. <laughs> it's great. It's just, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense, but it's pretty awesome. Though. No, oh, yeah. Okay. Let's pretend it's Rails. <laughs> See, that's the problem. It's that I just wrote delegate code today in the like the Rails way. Is there another secret? Uh, you need to add the cart right there. Is it first? Uh, I think it's last. <laughs> yeah, it's for Rails. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, right? So delegate these methods to this object and just assume the last one's the object. Okay. Ish. 
So then we can. Right? In theory? Maybe. Oh, oh. <laughs> death delegate. Hmm? I think it's the method actually called death delegate. Or do you have to define a delegate method? It's something. Look at the Well, this one. Mind me, just looking up Diablo 3 stuff. It's fine. Def delegator. Oh, oh, of course. Isn't that like a simple delegator? E or O? Uh, uh O. o. Extend. Uh. Wrong number of arguments. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's actually an array that you pass. Yeah, it might be an array. Yeah. Delegator. Oh, no, it's first things first. Yeah, you give it that. It's like a cart first. Yeah, cart first. <laughs> I'm going to use an array. Is that an array? You were lied to. And then, is it this? <laughs> no, no, it's not an array. It's just, well, it's a splat. It accepts a splat as the last yeah, arguments. But, oh, OK. It's not like that. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. Yeah. Accessor and not metals. Because it's oh. delegators. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> this, by the way, <laughs> this is what professional programming is actually like, in case yeah. for those of you in the room or not. All day long. <laughs> <laughs> Complete with the cursing and the uh, uncomfortable feeling. <laughs> you guys feel uncomfortable? I feel uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, on nine. Just do mess with nothing to say. Write your own. I don't understand what its deal is. Oh, it's not the bottom. Go to your tests. You were passing in a ton of stuff to your cart. Ah, right? No. Am I wrong? No. Yeah, oh, you're passing the time. The order did. Yeah, you're passing in the pulled the order did. Oh, shit. We didn't read your. Oh, okay. Thank you. Our code was sound. <laughs> There's a danger. Assume your test is fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, but I need this one. I, per I actually tested the time being different. The 25th. Yeah, uh, 26th is the wrong date, and they won't oh, get the discount. Gotcha. All right. Uh, I feel better. Do you feel better? I feel better. I'm going to drink beer now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. So there's there's an introduction to forwardable. <laughs> Del delegators are great. Forwardable is great. Um, <laughs> Forwardable's great. <laughs> Look how much less code you wrote. The Rails, so just so you know, the Rails version of this, and I don't understand, it should just get rolled in, like the new syn this, this syntax. If we were in Rails, if we are in Rails, which it, somewhere, something, probably in Agro Support, provides this, you could say, you could write, oops, that's still going to need, there's lots of colons in there, but... So you can say delegate the following methods, and then this, of course, is oh, options gosh. hash style. But that that reads very nicely. Um, def delegators, which sounds like some sort of failed rap group. <laughs> 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 That's how I remember that. 
Death Delegator's <laughs> cart, and then a list of it just that doesn't work as well. Uh, but it, but it, I mean, it functions just fine. Does everybody understand what that's doing? No. No. Okay. I don't believe it. Basically, <laughs> what it's doing is we're saying there are there are these methods that we want you to just we're going to call them just like this. We're going to call them straight up items, coupons, and customer locale. We want you to to behind the scenes grab the cart object and send the message to the cart object and call it from essentially calling it on the cart object and get get whatever the cart object gives you and then return us when we call that. Does that make sense? So it's delegating the responsibility for those methods out of this object and to uh, some other object within the within the object. Maybe you guys should write the macro what you would write. Yeah, there you go. You don't need the current. Yep. So that's the same as if I were to write this and say. I really think she needs to do class modeling. You. <laughs> <laughs> So those, that does the same thing, if I were to just write it out, as this, this line right here. This can be, so that's kind of a gotcha, right? Because not everybody knows that, that, what that is. So there might, you can write it and it makes for a really clear object when, when you're done. You're like, I know exactly what that does. It's very clear, it delegates all this there and everything's good, but. <clears throat> Sometimes your audience, which is going to be another programmer, uh, might not be um, as experienced, and that could that could throw a wrench in their day. Especially this particular format, Def Delegators, but but it is good stuff. Um, Avdi Grim uses it all the time. For some reason, when I think of extending forwardable, I think of Avdi Grim. Is that just me? He did a Ruby Tapas on it like pretty early. So. Yeah, and, um, and that was the first time I'd ever heard of it. So. His major blog post Objects on Rails thing. book. Like, so Objects on Rails is him doing his best to avoid actually using Rails while we're building a Rails application. It was like it's it's very much like just this theoretical exercise that he wanted to do. Um, that's actually a lot of fun. Uh, there's some danger in taking what he's like he's like believing that he's recommending doing these things, but in any case, he ends up using portable like constantly to build objects completely decoupled from Rails until he absolutely has to start saving stuff to the database and interacting with actual Rails. So, did anybody have any more any questions about that code? I just jumped up in the middle of talking and decided I was going to move on, but <laughs> no. What does it smell? Huh? How does it smell? It it still smells a little bit like rotten meat, I think. But <laughs> but that's okay. We it smells better than it did. So if like mine, your brain is fried right now. Uh, I put this in here because I was like, there are things that I want them to remember. What are those things? Oh, so so you may be like, I'm cool. I totally get this. Like Carter, the banana kid. Anybody hear this story? Uh, so this 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 picture was posted to Reddit with the title. This kid walked up, knocked on my door, asked for a banana. I gave him a banana, and he walked off. <laughs> <laughs> so this kid's just like, I need a banana. <laughs> they probably got bananas. So like, if you're like, I need a refactor. I know how to refactor. I know right where to go for that stuff. Then this was all hat to you. That's good. Maybe you're like this guy, just like everybody chill. I got this. Got two axes. I got this badass vest with whatever's in there. <laughs> I don't know. Axe, axe sharpening tools and granola. Uh, it's like I got this. This is good. Just just remember that 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 can lead when you're like this is refactored. I'm good. Or over refactoring also or over refactoring as we talked about that can lead to being like chill out. I got this. When I don't think you got this. Or you really be in trouble if it leads to this. When you're like, it's cool, I'm just going to throw a bucket of water on this fire next door. It's fine. So I don't know if you can see that. Literally, that is a dude with a bucket of water <laughs> hanging out of one apartment window and throwing it in the bl 
I actually stared at this image for like 10 minutes today, going like, is this real? Because I think, like, I can't see the pixels, but it might be Photoshop. I don't know. In any case, that's uh, that's the end. That's Code Smells and Refactoring 2 Judgment Day.